Um, sickness plagues our world, sickness that causes pain and anguish and suffering. So if a person is suffering so badly, do they have the right to take away life? I plan to go into the medical field one day, so um, I've studied euthanasia a lot. And I think it's important that we know about it because any one of us could be diagnosed with a disease that makes us question the value of our own life. Euthanasia is more commonly called doctor-assisted suicide or mercy killing, and it takes the lives of way too many people. Um, so today I want to teach you about some common arguments concerning euthanasia and ultimately, ultimately explain why it should be legal in all states. One of the main arguments in favor of legalizing euthanasia is that if someone is in pain and they want to die, they should be allowed to do so. Pro-euthanists argue that if a person has brain cancer and they're suffering, why not end their misery? But this argument is invalid because there are so many ways to ease the suffering of the terminally ill, one of which being palliative care. Palliative care is a special type of medical care for people with serious illnesses. The goal of palliative care is to provide relief from the symptoms and the stress of a serious illness for the family and the patient. So palliative care completely paralyzes the argument that euthanasia and suffering. Death is not the only way to end suffering. It's not necessary. And if it is legalized, it's very hard to control. Pro-euthanists argue that Euthanasia can be regulated, but evidence proves otherwise. Dr. Montero, who is the who's the dean of the Faculty of Law at the University of Namur, says it is extremely difficult to follow strict interpretations of legal requirements once euthanasia is permitted. For example, in Belgium, a woman was euthanized because she was suffering from anorexia. Mm. Another case in Belgium shows deaf twins who were euthanized because they went blind. In Oregon, a woman received a letter from her insurance company saying they wouldn't pay for chemotherapy, but they would pay for assisted suicide instead. Mm -hmm. In states where euthanasia is legal, it is evident that it is not regulated. Euthanasia causes people to grow numb to the idea, to death, to the idea of death, and so they begin to see it as a way of escape rather than the end of a life. Um, if euthanasia is legalized, it'll become more and more readily available, and it'll be seen as more of a treatment to be mentioned alongside of chemotherapy. So if you have a patient who's sick, and they don't have a lot of money, and they have a doctor sitting here explaining to them this simpler, much less expensive option, what do you think they'll choose? Pro-euthanists use this argument in a positive light. They argue that end-of-life care is so outrageously expensive, and if a person doesn't want to be a burden to their family, they have the right to end their life. In other words, it's cheaper to die than to sustain your life, and it's better that you be dead than a burden to your family. Mm -hmm. This argument devalues the sacredness of life. Mm -hmm. It is unacceptable to argue that it's cheaper to kill someone than to try to sustain their life. Euthanasia tells patients that they're better off dead when there's not one shred of evidence to prove that. Euthanasia is sometimes called mercy killing, but is it really merciful to end someone's life when there are so many other options for a meaningful life? Mm. Palliative care provides relief for symptoms and for state of mind. They treat depression and anxiety and they improve quality of life. And if, you, if euthanasia is legalized, who decides how far is too far? Who draws that line? Euthanasia takes the lives of people who are vulnerable and scared. The killing of a disabled person is not compassion, it is murder. Mm -hmm. Drops mic. Thanks, Dad.